let me talk about let me talk about reading development, and then I'll talk about MSB and why I don't think it's a productive way to go in terms of informing instruction. When you look at current research, and I'm talking 30 years worth, when you look at current research, there's a very clear consensus amongst people who pay attention to actual empirical studies, not what they would prefer to believe. And by that I'm talking about people like Ken Goodman. You're, ne he's, you're never going to say anything different than he was saying in 1976. He's going to say the exact same thing. But Ken is not paying attention mm -hmm. to current empirical research. Okay, if you talk to somebody like Keith Stanovich and you ask him if he thought that the uh, MSV uh, model fit what expert readers do, that the idea that we cross-check all the time, and we use, you know, we, we use a variety of cueing, of cues to decide how, what a word is. Mm -hmm. If you ask Keith Stanovich what he thought when he started out in 1980, he would have said, oh, I think the research is going to bear that out. But he and his buddy Keith West, you know, Keith Stanovich and somebody West, can't remember the West guys, Jerry West, Gerald West, what they did is they went out and tried to, you know, empirically ask that question, is this what expert readers do? And what they found, study after study after study, was that expert readers do not predict and use cues and guess at the pronunciation of words. They do that for meaning. They use context for meaning. And they use things like syntax and meaning. And for, they use that to figure out the meaning of a word, but they don't do it to get the pronunciation. What they found over and over was that it's poor readers that do that that actually good readers, what they do is they very quickly, because they have representations of the words already established in memory that are automatic, they don't even have to think about it. They don't do all this cross-checking hoo-ha. That's what poor readers do to try and figure out a word. And guess what? It's remarkably unreliable. There's a study that shows that when you guess at a word from context, when you guess at the pronunciation, not the meaning, when you guess at the pronunciation from context, you, are, you have about a 25% chance of being right. That's with expert readers. So it's unreliable. It's also woefully inefficient and slow. Okay? And that's so it's really the purview of poor readers that do that. Mm -hmm. So if we know that expert readers don't do that, if we know that expert readers, in, in fact, look very quickly at the words, immediately the, the, the print goes you know, into their mind, basically, and activates the, both the pronunciation and the, meeting, and the meaning in parallel. It's called parallel distributed processing. It activates those things without conscious effort. That's the whole automaticity argument, that it, you have, it happens without conscious effort. Then you've got all that cognitive capacity left over for comprehension. If you're having to slog through a, a uh, um, piece of prose, oh, what's my meaning? Oh, oh that's, that's not the right <laughs> form of grammar. You're, gonna, you're never going to finish anything. Expert readers don't do that. When expert readers do come to a word they can't pronounce, they very quickly Look at, look at it at the syllabic level and chunk it by use of syllables of words they already know. And then they figure it out, yeah, does that sound right? Does that make sense? But it's very, very rare for an expert to do that. So if we know that expert readers don't usually do that, then why are we, then what, then what we need to know is that's the end goal, okay? So now let's talk about reading development. Early on in reading development, some cross-checking strategies make a lot of sense. But as soon as kids can move across an entire word visually, like a consonant vowel consonant, a CVC word, and blend it, why would, and it's a blendable word, why would you do anything except have them look at the word? You want it to become automatic. You want it to become represented in memory with all its spelling perfectly laid out. You would, with that in mind, you never want to tell a kid to guess from the first sound or guess from the picture, or guess from the context. How are they ever going to get the representation in memory if they continue to do that? Okay. With that in mind, a C, an MSV kind of approach, it doesn't even make sense to do it past a beginning reading level development of about mm, maybe a DRA, if you're going to go with DRA, maybe a DRA F D E. And even still, it's dependent on the, it, what, whether the kid uses M, S, or V is driven by the word. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, he relies on M too much, or he relies on V too much. 
It's, it's driven by what's there in the word that the kid knows and what the kid uses. It's not driven by sort of a, a fondness for a particular cueing system. It just doesn't happen that way. Uh, I, would cue, I, would, I would ask you to look at two pieces of work there, Keith Stanovich and West's work on what expert readers do. Rayner and Politzak, R-A-Y-N-E-R, Keith Rayner, and I think it's Raymond Politzak. The Psychology of Reading and what the Eye Movement Study showed us about good and poor readers, it's very clear that it's poor readers who do all this cross-checking. Okay? Um, and I would also encourage people to look at Linnea Aries, E-H-R-Y, Linnea's Aries, Three Decade and Uta Frith, Jean Chaw, Marilyn Adams. There's, there are so many researchers who have pointed us in an, uh, an empirically substantiated direction about how kids learn to read. And it's not by continuing to cross-check after about beginning of first grade.